So uh, let's uh, kind of review what arrays really are and see what how they work. And then from there, we're going to jump into accessing arrays using functions and see how it's going to affect uh, um, the performance and uh, if we are using an array and how it's going to uh, pass the information or pa the, the information either really passed or we are just uh, using a common mistake uh, kind of uh, mentioning it that way. So when we have an array, I'm going to go with an integer five of them, okay, and I'm going to use my artistic uh, capabilities today again and do the drawing thingy. Uh, so uh, we said that when, yes, I am recording, yeah. Thank you. So uh, when we created an array, we said that uh, it in memory, it looks like something like this. And uh, we have, uh, uh, let's say each segment over here is an integer. So each one of these four bytes, I'm not gonna write the memory address and things like that. I don't care about those things. And I'm sorry if the cells are not equal, let's assume they are equal and not be too picky. Um, so these are uh, the integers that we have in memory. And when we say int a5, what essentially happens is something like this, that someplace in memory, you are going to have uh, five, mem five integers, one, two, three, four, five integers allocated for you. And at certain place in memory, there is actually a pointer, okay? And that pointer is called A, okay? And that pointer actually holds the address of the beginning of this array. So that's essentially what an array is. We mentioned that, okay? So when I say int A5, this thing that you see happens in memory. It occupies five spaces in memory, five integers. It creates a pointer called A pointing to the beginning of the array. Okay, and that's where all the indexes are coming from. So when we actually say we index zero, it means from the address i goes zero uh, integers further. That's why it's the first one. Then we're gonna say, because it's the beginning, right? Then we're gonna say from a pass one, and then with, that's when you're gonna go to the second element. And then you say two, that goes to sec the third element, three goes to fourth, and four is the last one. And that's why indexes in, in arrays are actually one less than, I mean, it starts from zero, okay? Uh, one less than the sequence number. So if we have five integers, it starts from zero, goes up to four, we know all these things. So I am going to uh, initialize uh, these arrays to some values so we can actually deal with it. So I'm gonna put over here 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Okay, now we know that 10 goes in a first one, 20 goes in second, and, and so on and so forth. We know that, right? So let's say I, I want to print the, all these things up. So if I want to print all these out, what do I do? I create a, um, an index for a loop, then I'm going to start from zero, go up to the size of the information that I have in the array that is five, so i less than five, and i plus plus. So this loop provides for me an index that starts from zero, goes up to four, and through this I can actually print each element one by one, and therefore I'll go printf percent d, and I'm going to put a space after, and in here, I'm going to put a i. And because the value of i starts from 0, goes up to 4, essentially traverses through the array starting from 0, going up to 4, hence printing 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Are we okay with this? Anybody have any problem with this? No problem. Okay, and then at the end, I'm going to get, say printf backslash n. Whenever you want to just print one thing, one character, you can use another function standard output called put char. 
put care just prints one character. So you can actually say put care and put one character in there. I'll remember that. We're going to go through all the functions later, but it's, it won't harm me if we know this. We just want to print one character. That's it. So I'm going to use put care. Put care prints one character. So if I run this beautiful program of mine three years later, after compilation and everything, I'll see that the output is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Any problem with this? Questions? Suggestions? No, right? Oh, okay. Now, if I want to pass this thing to a function, what can I do? How can I pass all these five stuff to a function? How can I do that? Okay? If I want to pass these things to a function, take a look at it. Isn't the address of the beginning of all these stuff inside A? It is inside A, right? So if I give a to a function access to the content of the pointer A, the whole array will be accessible to it, correct? It can actually access it, simply. So that's what I'm going to do. So how do I do that? I can actually create a function and say over here, so let's call it print ints, okay? So I'm going to say um, uh, void print ints. And I'm going to pass something to that one and, and, and print it. So what am I going to pass to this thing? I, when, I say, when I say integer A5 and I put 5 and like at line 4, what happens? The compiler actually creates an array for me by occupying five integers and putting the address of the beginning in A, correct? What I can do only in an argument is to create a bodyless array, an array that doesn't have a body. It's only the name of the array. So what I can do, I can do this. I can say integer, let's say array, and put nothing in there. So what happens is that the, in the function print ints, an array is going, uh, an array wants to get created. Oh, let's, let's change that name from array because I'm going to say array and then array, array, array. That's going to go bad. So I'm going to call it B, okay? So just for us to know it's B, okay? So in function print ints, essentially, an array wants to get built up and that array has to be somewhere in memory, right? But it doesn't have a body, it only has a name. So what happens over here, it only creates the body for that one. And that body is called what? B. Correct? Any problem with that? All right. Now, because this B is not created, but, and don't forget, you cannot do this outside anywhere other than an argument of an array. So you cannot create a bodyless array under I over there, integer at line seven at line six in function main. You can't do that. It only can reside inside uh, argument of an array. That's it. Okay? Now, we know that, as I mentioned before when we were dealing with the arrays, I said every single argument, every single argument that you put inside an array argument list, they are essentially variables that they get initialized. Their values will be set when the function is being called. Right now that int p doesn't mean anything, right? But what I can do over here is to actually bring the whole code over here for printing, put it in print ints, change the a to b. Okay, now if by some magic I would be able to get the contents of get the contents of A and copy it into B. The result will be that B would point to the same place that A is pointing, correct? So how can I do that? It's simply done by calling the function. So in here, if I say print. Int, there's a mistake over here. Can anybody tell me what is the mistake? Yeah, 
yeah, we don't have a prototype. When main's getting compiled, it's not going to know what, what print int is. So, so what I'll do, I'm going to take this prototype, I'm going to copy it, and I paste it over here. And remember, prototypes, you will see in many books, they ignore the name of the, of the argument when they are putting a prototype for a function. Never do that. Use that to your advantage. Put a name that actually makes sense. Because the name is going to be ignored anyway, do it. So in here, I'm going to actually say array to print. OK? You can name it anything, as long as it's the exact same type of what we have over there, right? So that kind of becomes kind of like a comment for a person who wants to use the, the, the thing. They look at the prototypes. Oh, I know. So this is for so array to print, right? Now, what happens when actually it's called? So in here, I'm saying int a yada yada yada. I have the information you know, we have over there. We know that a gets created, and we know that the array is over there, and it's initialized to the values. When I say print int a, as you see, I'm only putting the name of the array, which means I am passing the content inside the pointer a into the function b. So this b of mine will hold the value a has after the function is called. And as soon as that is called, B will point to the same place. As a result, B0 will be the same thing as, B8, as A0. They are the same thing. It's just the same array with two different names. Yes? So I think, I think stupid. Uh, There's no stupid question. Absolutely no difference. That's your answer. The only difference between an array and a pointer is that an array guarantees that the, at the end of the address of the pointer, something is there. But with a pointer, when you just create a pointer, it's a place to hold an address. There is no guarantee something sitting at the end unless you do it through your program. An array is essentially a combo. When you create an array, you say double I don't know, D50. When you do something like this, you tell to the compiler, occupy some place with 50 doubles in it, get its address, put it in pointer D, and give it to me. So it's a combo of things happening together. Later on, you're going to learn in OOP244, you can actually do this manually yourself. It's called dynamic memory allocation, where you actually can have a pointer of your own only, and then you manually occupy the memory, and you extract the address, and you put it in there. So essentially, what you're doing in line 6 at this place, int A5, you can actually do that manually in three lines. But the problem is that if you do it yourself, then you're responsible to give that memory back to operating system. Big headache. So this is a special case? It's not a special case. That's how arrays are. So arrays are essentially pointers? Yeah. Right. Uh, arrays are not pointers. What, arrays are built using pointers. I cannot say houses are essentially bricks. Can I do that? No. Bricks are part of a house. Okay, so an array, the most important part of an array is the pointer of the array that actually points to the elements. Hence, this thing that I have written over here. So, as I mentioned before, the logic that I put over here, integer i, yada, yada, when I spin it goes b0, because b holds the same address that o, a is holding, I can actually, so in a, in a way, I am saying I am passing the array into print int's function. But that's not really what I'm doing. I'm passing an address. I'm not passing five integers to it. I'm just passing where the integers are in memory, which is a good trick. It's, it's much cheaper. Is it easier for me to give you the address of my house so you can come to my house, or I bring my house where you are? Just think about it for a second. It's exactly the same thing. In an array, because I have several elements back-to-back -back sitting in memory, it is always better to Actually, there is no way that you can actually pass the whole thing. It's impossible. C doesn't get, allow you that. Okay, allow you to do that. Now, just to show you what I mean by this. So now there's, a, there's, a, um, I, I, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to create another integer array, and this one I'm going to call it x. And in here I'm going to put more. So it's going to be say seven of them. And I'm going to go over here, sixty, and seventy. OK? And I can actually use print ints now 
to print X, correct? So if I run this program, it actually prints, that, prints both of them. But the problem is that let's actually do something else. Let's change the values so we know what we are dealing with. So I'm going to put 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, just to be able to see the values are different. So if I actually do this, the print int function of mine is printing the array x. Not perfectly, but it's trying. Why? Because array x has seven elements. Array a has five elements. My print int function, because it was written by a rookie programmer that is me, I hard-coded the size of the array over there. I've actually put five over there, right? So it's only capable of printing five. Can, can, can C know what is the size of an array? So I'm going to say go up to the end of the array? Can I size up the size up? No, you can't. It's impossible. Array is in, uh, C is incapable of it. The answer is no, it's not capable. There is no size of. The, the thing that you heard about size of, first of all, everybody forget what he said. Okay. <laughs> secondly, secondly, it's a complete different thing. If you want, in the break, I'm going to explain what size of is. Okay. All right. So if you want your function to be a usable function for all the arrays, you are responsible to pass the size to it because C language is incapable of knowing what is the size of an array, period. Okay? There is no way around it. You can't tell me, well, could I use this? No, you can't. It cannot do that. It's impossible. It's not within the structure of the language. That's how they made the language lightweighted. So it can be very small. You can program the smallest microcomputers with it, with no problem, with 2,000 bytes of memory. Okay? It's not like gigantic. Anything that you want to add to a programming language to be able to, ca to be capable of doing all these little things, it's going to add to the volume of the language. Uh, and they didn't do that. So, so if I want to do like that, do something like that, I have to make sure that my function carries the size of the array with it. And then depending on what size I'm going to give to it, it's going to print that one. So I'm going to say print ints from an array of integers up to this size. And I'm going to update the name of the variable over here just to make sure that it's array size, something like that. Now in here when I'm printing, I'm going to say print ints a and 5 and print ints x and 7. And now when I actually run this program, the function acts properly, which means uh, the five integers are printed as five and the seven are printed as seven. Yes? Is there a library function which can count the elements in Go back to the previous thing I said. I put that period at the end not to have this question. Okay. okay. It is impossible for C language to know what is the size of an array, period. It so doesn't know. So you can't. It's impossible. Because C language does not get that information from OS. So it doesn't have, it doesn't have anywhere stored. Because it's, no stored, it, no, it's, it's not stored anywhere, it's impossible for it to know. You guys keep asking this, so now I have to tell you. The only way that you can find the size of an array is in the scope that the array is created. That's the only place that it's known. Which means only in main I can find out what is the size of x. Duh! It's written over there. Why do I need to find it? It's 7. <laughs> I know that. I, know I don't need to find it. The place that I need to find it is in some other scope. And at that place is impossible. Yes? Oh, that's not, you cannot find it. It's a standard that we program it agreed upon. There is no way to find. Yeah, you can put that standard over here too. If you're sure that the values that you're passing to an array are all positive, you can say, okay, I'm going to end the values with negative, with minus one. So come up with the standard, then you can find out. Yeah, it's exactly like passing the size. What's the difference? So you come up with a standard. You say, an array of characters, it's impossible to find out what is its size. So what they did, because it's used so often, they said, okay, and because the say, see, why did they come up with this standard in strings? Why? Why they made it null terminated? 
because when you are dealing with an integer, if the integer is small or it's big, it takes four bytes to hold. Zero or five billion, it takes the same size, four bytes to hold. So you don't need to worry about anything. You get the integer, you get what the size inside, you'll find out what it is, correct? But when you're dealing with a string, you don't, you're not dealing with a single variable. Names are different. My name is Fardat, somebody else is Al, we have B, and we have Nirantarun Aritnara Karaja. Huge name. Yeah? We have, so all, so all these, because of these things, we always say, oh, I'm going to occupy the biggest name that we have, say 60 characters, and we're going to put Al and Fardad in there. Now, how do we find out where the data ends? Because the size of the array is 50. We put a zero at the end. That's what a string is. So it's a convention. It's a standard that we agree upon. It is not within the C language. C language doesn't have any capability on that one. Because, of, because it doesn't have the capability, they actually created a library called string header file just to follow that st standard. And all the functions in, str in string header file are guaranteed to follow that standard. And that's why they call it string header file. Okay, it's not within the C language. It's very important to, to understand this. Are we okay with this? And, and the reason that we could do that and the reason they could come up with that is that they had this lock that a null character with all bits set to zero is ASCII code of nothing. So it's an absolute invalid value. They could use that. You don't have such a thing in an integer. Any number is a valid number. You cannot say, unless you have a specific algorithm, like you're counting the number of students in a class. If that's the case, then you can say yes. If it's minus one, it's end of data because it's, a class is impossible to have minus one students in it. Got it? All right. Are we okay? All right. So now that we are at this point that we understand all these things, we have to understand one important fact. We have to understand one important fact. That is, okay, let me save this. Um, do I... Did we understand, do I need to wipe that thing off? Uh, can I wipe that off? Or do you, do you all remember that? Actually, no, let it be. Yeah. <laughs> Zero, one, passing, arrays, two, functions. So... Uh, let's say I'm printing that A twice. Okay, let me just, we don't need that. All right? And in here, by mistake, I'm doing this. All right? So in my printing thing, I am modifying the array. Will it modify the source? Yeah, because all of them are sharing the same data, correct? So if I actually run this program, the first one is going to print the array, and when the second one is printing, whoo, the data is gone. Oops. So with arrays and essentially pointers come the danger of modifying the source because you have access to the originals. When you are passing size by value, if I change the value of size, who cares? It's a local variable inside print ints. You set it to something, when it's going to get destroyed, nobody cares. But B over there, integer B, is a dangerous thing. Why? Because it holds the address of, some, address of the data of someone else. So if it changes its values, someone else's information is going to get ruined. That is why it is the programmer's responsibility to always look at the logic of the function that it's writing. If the logic of the function, the name of the function, indicates this function is a read-only function, a function that is only supposed to get the information, the programmer is always responsible to add a const before the name of the array, which means 
This array is a constant. Look at B at line 16. What happened? There is a little red thingy over there coming up now. And if I look at it, const int pointer B, expression must be my modifiable value while you are changing it. Okay? Which means that const over there, it's, it's one of those but it works moments. That somebody creates a function in, in a project or in, a, in whatever and I reduce mark and I say you forgot to put const over there. But they say, but it works. It is printing. I know it works. I know it prints. But regulations dictate that whenever your logic in the function dictates that this function is supposed to only read, you have to make that a const. So you don't shoot yourself in a foot. It protects you from yourself. That's what it does. Yes? If you make it a constant, can you ever modify it? Oh, it's just constant. Uh huh. Thank you very much for that question. So, with this A thingy that I have, it's a good thing I did not wipe that out. It's uh, with that A thingy that you have over there, okay, the information can go, can be accessed in two ways, either reading or writing. Why? Because A is just a regular thing and access through it is perfectly okay. But with B, you are saying this direction, going back cannot be done. It, you can only read it. You cannot get it. You cannot change the value. You cannot do anything with it. So only through B you, are, you have read-only access to this. Okay? It's, it's, yeah, it's only a read, it's a read-only access. I wanted to give you a real rough example for it, but the example that I wanted to mention kind of sucked, so I'm not going to do it. Anyway, so what I'm saying is that, just remember, you can, you can, <laughs> what's going on there? <laughs> I'm teaching with passion, putting my heart and soul in my lecture, and everybody's looking outside the window. What's going on? Nothing? Okay, good. Nothing. So nothing is more, it means nothing is more important than your lecture. All right. You can take that to it. Nothing, comma, is more important than your lecture. <laughs> All right. Are we okay? Are we okay with this? So essentially, so now I can actually clear all that thing out. All right. Essentially, I'm going to actually comment that and I'm going to say const will prevent this. Okay? Now it works perfectly. Now, if I wanted to actually read 10 integers, then I, don't, I cannot make it a constant because the logic dictates that this is supposed to overwrite. Are we okay with this? So if I wanted to actually have a read int function, I'm going to say over here void read ints, int array to read, and then int array size, so it, it almost looks the same. Right? And when I write that function, so void read int, int a, or b, or c, whatever, int size, now in here I am going to uh, put the information in it and start reading it. So I'm going to say over here, uh, I'm going to put some, uh, whatchamacallit, I'm going to put some uh, um, row over there to see how many things I'm reading. So I'm going to say printf, uh, uh, I'm going to say percent %d of percent %d, okay? Uh, and in here I'm going to say, um, uh, so I need that loop thingy, int i, for i set to zero, i less than size, and i plus plus, and put this one inside the loop. And then what I am going to do over here would be putting i plus one, 
and in here I'm going to put size. So the user knows actually how many things are being entered, and then it's going to say uh, scanf percent %d, and in here I'm going to put address of ci. And now because C is another pointer somewhere that points exactly where whatever that thing is assigned to, I can actually do this. So I can actually say printf, enter the marks, for example. And I'm going to go to a uh, new line in here, say, okay. And in here I'm going to say read int. Uh, C and five of them and oh not C eight what are you doing uh, uh, five of them and then uh, in here I'm gonna say marks printf marks before um, data entry. Okay, print ints, and it's going to print the integers, enter the marks, and here I'm going to say printf marks after data entry. Okay, now I run this beautiful program of mine. Did I miss anything? Am I going to screw anything up in here? No. Okay, so I'm going to do it like, oh, no, what did I do wrong? Oh, semicolon. Oh, still another one. Printf, stupid compiler. If you know it's error, just fix it. <laughs> Printf. <laughs> okay. These are real comments from students. All right. So now in here it's going to say marks before data entry. Now it says enter the marks, one of five. Okay. So I'm going to put over here 30. In here I'll put a 60, 30. 60 again, why don't know why, and then 75 out of 5. Now it's going to say those are the marks, marks after that entry. So it actually sets the values one by one. So this uh, just highlights the fact that because arrays by nature are passed by address, you modify them in the function, the original values change. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are you okay two? Are we okay three? Sold. Now, when we are writing functions, now that we know we can actually pass arrays around, why we can make our functions nicer. How? It makes more difficult to write functions, but because functions are already written once, and they're going to be reused, whenever you write a function, put as much effort as you want to add bells and whistles to it. Those bells and whistles, like for here, you see I'm printing three printf statements before every single time either I'm printing or I'm reading, correct? So why don't I just do that right in my read ints? So in here I'm going to say, so in here, why don't I just pass a character array called prompt? Okay, and that prompt, am I, why is it giving me error over here? Accept an expression, would I do something wrong? I don't know, it's the intelligence sometimes goes bananas. But anyway, so character, but am I changing the prompt? No, I'm just going to print it, right? So let's make it a constant. Again, remember about the logic. Okay, integer I'm going to change because I'm going to, Read it, right? But this one I'm not going to change. So in here, what I'm going to do is this. First of all, I'm going to say printf. Percent s and prompt, right? Are we okay with this? You write the code like that, they know that you don't know C good. The reason is that what is the first argument that you are passing to a to a to a uh, to a to printf statement? Can anybody tell me? It's a. It's no. What is it? What when you put 
You see over here, you see this red thing marks after data entry in single double quotes. What is this? Isn't that a string? What type of a string it is? Isn't it a constant string? Because you can't change it, right? It's a literal value. So it's a constant string, correct? So why am I saying in the constant string to print the string again? Why don't I just say prompt? The first argument that is passed to printf is a character string, right? And in that characters, I don't want to print any numbers. I just want to print a string. Why don't you just put, up, put that one over there? If you do not understand the difference between the two, it means you did not grasp what does it mean to, uh, so it, it, it means you cannot let go <laughs> of what you used to based on your knowledge. Your knowledge says, see, this printf at line 11, what is it receiving as an argument? Only a constant character pointer, correct? What is this one is receiving? Only a constant character pointer. Potatoes, potatoes. Same. Are we okay with this? All right. Now that, I do, that I've done that, I can do the exact same thing. So this one is not prompt. prompt. So let's, let's update the, the prototype for that one. So... So this one is not going to be prompt. For print ints, you're printing a title, right? Although it's the same, but name it properly. So in here, I'm going to say constant character prompt. Uh, a, a constant character uh, string title. OK? And now I'm going to uh, put that one over here, too. So that's title. So in here, I'm going to say. Uh, I'm going to say title, and in here I'm going to say printf, oh, title. Now, if I go to my main, I don't need to have a printf over here anymore. I simply do this. Print int marks before data entry. In here, I'm going to say read ints, and in here, I'm going to say enter the marks, and in here, I'm going to say marks after yada yada, whatever you're doing. So I'm going to put that one over here. So the two are the same, essentially, right? When I run it, I'm going to do something before I run it. Control A, Control C. Copy. New. Uh, zero to array IO uh, in funks. Dot C. Control A, Control V. So that's what we have done. Save it now. Now, if I run this program, the outcome is identical. But the difference is that it's just more elegant. It means you know what you're doing. Are we okay with this? Yes. One more time. As long as the array, mm -hmm. it doesn't have the left of two because it's wanted. So what, how would it be different if I pass only pointer to the first oh. element? Oh, so as you're saying, that's the next thing that I want to cover. Let me save this, and I'm going to go to the next one. Right. Can I do that? Just hold that question for two seconds, OK? So in, in here, I'm going to say, uh, Zero, zero, 003, that's array IO uh, in funks. Mm, nice way. Okay? <laughs> that's it. Okay? So now, again, going back to what we've talked about, going back to what we've talked about, going back to what we've talked about, going back to what we talked about, 
all right? Going back to what we talked about, the, when I'm actually passing, uh, when I'm passing, uh, oh, in here I forgot to put const and it didn't complain, so this one is a const. Let me just make this const. I have to fix the other ones too, darn, because it's print, const end. Yeah, that's interesting, didn't complain. All right. All right, so what I wanted to say, I wanted to say, based on what we talked about, because a bodyless array is essentially only a pointer pointing to, right? So it's only a pointer, it just doesn't have anything. So essentially, instead of doing this, you can simply do this. Identical, no difference. Actually, you rarely see anybody doing the two things because it's one character less the type. One less character to type. So if I do it like this, and they call it pointer notation for array, it is the same thing. So it's the pointer notation with an array, and it essentially is the same, no difference. I'm just doing it for you to see. So the, it's not the advantage of passing a pointer. It is not, there is no difference. They are identical. There is no advantage or disadvantage. And as you see, a pointer can be used with array notation, and an array can be used with pointer notation. It doesn't make any difference. And if I run it, it runs the exact same way with absolutely no difference. <clears throat> this is something that you need to learn from understanding a language, uh, any programming language. When you look at the specification, specifications of the language, if you come up with a solution that you guess, 90% it's right. You, we just understood that point, arrays are a piece of memory with pointers pointing at them. I took the piece of memory away, what remained was only a pointer. The question came up, what is the advantage of passing a, an array because it's only a pointer? And the answer is, what you guessed is right. It is a pointer, no difference. Okay? It is a pointer, no difference. They are identical. All right? But you cannot create an array with a pointer. When you're creating an array, you have to use the notation. There's no way around it. Unless you learn what is uh, dynamic memory allocation that you're going to learn in OP244. Are we okay down to here? Any problem with this? So, let's talk about structures, okay? And it's a good time for a break too, so I'm going to pause this. Okay, starting from the beginning. Uh, we know from knowledge of pointers that when you have a double value d, I can simply pass its address to a function instead of uh, returning the value and read uh, the information that I have through scanf into the address that I receive. And because the address is the address of the double D, it's going to actually put the value in the D. Now I'm going to pause the recording. So now we kind of reviewed how pointers work. So in here, what I can do to show off that I can actually, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, so I can actually write a print function. So void print double. And in here, I'm going to say const character pointer uh, uh, title and or label this one not title because it's uh, so I'm gonna say label and in here I'm gonna put double sorry constant double pointer DP I'm printing it using an address that's the show off I'm talking about absolutely no need to do something like this okay but I'm just doing it because I can all right, so now I'm going to actually do the print thingy. So I'm going to actually take this beautiful thing of mine over here and print it out. Actually, there's a little advantage. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. And then in here, I'm going to say 
printf. In here, I'm going to actually put percent %s. You'll see why. I'm going to put percent %s because I want to put a column in front of it and a space. Now I put label. So in here, it makes sense to not to put the whole thing over there. And then afterwards, I want to print the LF, right? So I'm going to say percent %lf, point, say, 2 LF, and I'll go to new line, and I print the label, uh, and the other one, I'm going to put the target of DP, <clears throat> okay? So it's going to print that thing, percent two point whatever. So when I forget about this structure at this point, we are just going through pointers at this point, kind of a review, control F5. So when I run, run this beautiful program of mine, it works exactly the same way. So in here, in here, if I called the function in my main, it would have worked much better. Okay. <laughs> I didn't call my function. Okay, so print double, print double. In here, I'm going to say uh, entered a GPA. And in here, I'm going to say comma address of D. Okay. All right, now it's better. Now, if I run this beautiful program of mine, it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to put over here 3.5. Sorry, GPA is 0 0.1, but anyways. So enter GPA 0 0.50. Okay? Are we okay with this? So why it's an advantage to pass the address over here instead of just putting the double thingy? What is the size of a double? What is the size of a double? How many bytes a double takes in memory? I'm going to put this thing in a test. <laughs> Seriously, now your next quiz is going to have this. The size of every single thing from integers, I'm going to do it. Eight bytes, right? A double takes eight bytes. What is the size of a pointer in C? We always say pointer is an integer, right? So it's? Four, correct? Yeah. So I actually passed four bytes of information to the function and manipulated the double instead of passing eight. I saved lots of time. It, took, it takes twice the amount of time to pass eight bytes. Whatever, I know it's a small time, but it still is half, yes. What's the passing by reference? Ah! What do you mean by reference first? Are you talking C++ or C? C, okay. Passing by reference copies the value. I thought you were going C++. I got mad. Passing, passing by, if you pass by address, pass by value, yes. We, uh, in, we don't have pass by reference in C language, okay? We have pass by address or value. If I just passed it by, if I just passed the double over there, it would have copied the eight bytes to pass the double. But when I'm passing the address, it only sends the address that is a four byte thing. So I save some time. So it's more efficient, right? And it works. Also, when I'm printing a double, I need to change the number of precision over here. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's five, right? How do I do that? Easy. In this, you can always replace any number that you put for formatting, replace it with an asterisk, and put that asterisk in a sequence of percent. So the first percent is the string. The second percent is, but what is this one? Okay, so what you can do, you can actually pass a, um, uh, an integer to it. Okay, so the integer that you pass to it will actually uh, be the size of the thing that you have. So in here, I'm going to say int precision, precision. Oh, come on, Farad, you can do it. Okay, all right. Are we okay with this? So, no? Oh, we have to actually pass something, and in here I, I and I, in here I need to put it in a, Precision, and in here now, because it's GPA, I only want one digit after the decimal point. So essentially, it becomes percent 
0 0.1. So, be, be, uh, sorry, dot point 0.1. So this will be, so let me just show it to you. So now if I actually do it like this, and I'll put 3.5. What did I do wrong? Oh, did I? Oh, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. my apologies. I made a mistake, sorry about that. All right, so. So now that happened, okay? Are we okay with this? So see what happened. Essentially, this is what happened. Label goes into percent %s. Precision goes to asterisk. And dp goes to lf. OK? That's called variable format. You can change the format based on your program, because but that can't be done in scanf. Okay. Because scanf doesn't have such a thing, only printf. All right? Are we okay with this? So we are learning little things. This is input output for next week, but it's a, because it just made sense, I mentioned it over here. So everybody understands what happened, right? Are we okay? Okay. So I'm going to clear this one up and stop that. So now we know about double and passing. As, but now, what I have over here, I have I'm going to do something in here, if you don't mind. Since I have done that, I'm just going to copy this. Let's pause record. Thank you. Now, let's do the same thing for the structure. So I want to have a function that reads a student and prints a student. If I want to print or read the student, when I was passing the double, I said it advantages to it advantages to pass the the address because the address of a double is smaller than size of a double. So it's easier to pass, it's less work to pass the address instead of the eight bytes. Now look at that structure, student marks over there. I have an integer and three doubles. That's 24 and 4. There are th that's 32 bytes of, uh, thir 28, uh, 28 bytes of, uh, of data, right? So it's always better to pass an address of a structure instead of structure by value. Always. Especially returning a structure with a function, that's disastrous. It means it has to first create a temporary structure, put the stuff in it, return it, and then destroy it. Oh, wow, it's lots of time to, to consume for that. So we don't want that to happen. So even if you want to print something, it's better to pass the address. So if I want to have the same thing, say void, read, student marks, student marks, Read student marks. If I want to have something like that, because I'm reading student marks, I need to pass it. I don't need to pass a prompt. It's student marks, right? I'm not going to pass a prompt. I'm just going to pass the address of student marks. So I'm going to say struct student marks address st. So that's the pointer. And if I want to print the student marks, I will still pass the address, but I'll make it a constant. Because I only pass four bytes to handle 28 bytes. It's always better to do so. So now, if I want to write these beautiful functions of mine, all I need to do is to go over here, give it a body, give it a body. You can always compile at this, this stage to see if your code is proper. So the best way when you're writing a huge program and you know what your functions are, the best way is to always write your functions and create mock-up functions, empty functions, and return some garbage in them 
if they are returning a value, just return some garbage, compile the whole thing, see if it compiles, and then fill the functions one by one and then recompile. That, uh, remember, the more comp you compile your code, the, the earlier to compile your code, the easier it's to mark, to, to, to write the code. When you do the whole thing and you compile, you get 95 billion errors, okay? But when you just write three lines of code and you get an error, you, you know the problem is in the three lines of code. You don't, don't have to go look around all the things. So now if I want to, now if I want to read student marks, okay, what do I need to do? Uh, let's go with printing first. So print student marks. I'm going to say printf. Um, uh, what are the students? Uh, student marks. So I have student number. So I'm going to say student number, student number, number. And I'm going to put over here percent %d. I want to show the student number and then go to new line, right? Now, because that st is a pointer to go to the target, I have to put an asterisk beside it. So I have to say asterisk st, okay? And then I put dot, and then I put the student number, correct? But sadly, that doesn't work. It's not going to work. Why? Because dot, that is membership, it's much stronger than asterisk target of. So computer tries to evaluate this first. So it thinks student number in here is a pointer and you want to get to it. So, it's, so when you don't write anything, computer compiles it like this. And that's why it gives you an error. It's going to say target of student number in SD. And that doesn't work. So be, to fix this problem, you have to make sure you put the braces around this to enforce the compiler to first go to the target of SD, so that becomes your student, now give me its student number. You extract the student number out. That's how it works. So if, I, if you want to do the exact same thing for, for students, oh, student number, that's a new thing, student number, uh, and in here it's going to be, the first is going to be IPC144, IPC144, 144, and in here I'm going to put uh, 0.1 LF, let's say, and in here I'm going to say uh, IPC mark, and uh, what did I have? I had IPC, ULI, ULI and it's, okay, so ULI, what is ULI what? ULI? 101. 101? So ULI 101, and then in here I'm going to go ULI mark, and then finally the last one was EAC, I think, right? Mm -hmm. And EAC is what? EAC 150, okay, and uh, 0.1 LF again, 0.1 LF, and 0.1 LF, and this one's going to be, what is that, uh, U, uh, EAC, EAC mark, okay, and when I want to read the stuff using read students, it's the exact same thing, so um, I have to say uh, printf, Enter, uh, so enter following values, values, backslash n, following student information, and then I'm going to go printf, uh, printf uh, student number, number, and I'll get the student number, and I'm going to go scanf. Okay, so I need the student number. First, I have to get to the student number that is this. So I'll go percent %d, right? Percent %d, and then I'll put the student number, and I extract the address of it. Right? Isn't that too many things to type? You know, ampersand, open braces, Asterisk, SD, by the end of it, you're gonna, your finger's going to hurt, okay? So they were originally like this, but then after that, they say, okay, when we are dealing with a pointer with a structure, not to have too many things to type, let's find an operator to replace it to make it easier, okay? So instead of actually writing this, okay, you can say ST, 
that points to student number. See, it's much easier. So that arrow operator that you see is essentially to save one, two, three, four things to type. Instead, you just do type two things. That's all. But it means exactly that. It's absolutely no difference. OK? So that arrow thingy at the left side of arrow, there must be an address. And the good thing is that that arrow is not as powerful as this one. Uh, it is more powerful than this one, which means this happens first always. And then the address is extracted. So ampersand goes to student number. OK? Yes? Oh, it's everywhere. It's, like you have it in a book, everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's in the book, and you just type operator priority and see. Poof! 55,000 things are going to come up. Thank you, Google, so I don't have to teach. Anyways, so, student, and the rest happens like that. So, uh, if, so, in here, instead of actually printing like this, I could have said ST. That points to STNO. Okay? They put that arrow kind of to show it's a pointer. So you always show a pointer with an arrow? That's exactly what it means, like the, the pointer that points to that one. And it's actually a very cool notation. I'm going to leave the rest just to show you the pain and you appreciate this one, okay? So for the rest of the stuff, student number and And these, I'm going to just copy and then remove these and do like that. All right, so, so I'm going to do this. Oh. And with the scanf, You can read the things. Of course, this is LF. And this is SD that points to IPC mark. And this is uh, SD that ports points to ULI mark. And SD that points to, what does it point to? Uh, EAC mark. And this has to be LF and LF. Are we okay with this? All right. So that's that. Structures are passed by pointer and value like this. I'm not going to run this program. You know it's going to run. It's going to show it. I'm not going to, nothing special about it. But uh, that's how it is. So you, you rarely see a seasoned programmer pass a structure by value unless they really need a copy for someone. So if they are supposed to do some modification to something, then it makes sense. Like, if you actually want to change some values in it and do something with it, I don't know why, but there is a reason for it, then you don't create a temporary, you, you don't create a local structure and set it, and then you don't do that. You simply pass by value, and then you use it. You know it's not going to change out there, but it's very expensive. Okay? But whenever you have to pass a structure to a function, the preference is always, and if you don't want to modify it, the preference is always to pass a pointer that is constant, and it's extremely important. This could be a beautiful question for your final exam. Why do we prefer to pass structures or, uh, to, a, to a function using an address instead of value? Why? The reason is that you always use four bytes, and that's as cheap as you can get. Now, this structure that I have written is a very small thing. Structures usually have lots of information in them, and passing by uh, value is very expensive. Questions down to here? Suggestions? Now we can mix the two. We can have an array of students. So in here, instead of, so if I want to call those functions, I'm going to have uh, struct student, mo stu uh, struct. Sometimes, yeah, student marks. ST, and you can say, oh, look at that. I could have, hmm, I actually used scanf over here. So, yeah, 
But instead of scanf, I actually could set this one to read int and stuff like that. But anyways. Um, so if I want to read the, the student mark, I can say read student marks. And in here, I'm going to pass address of st. OK. And if I want to print student marks, again, I pass the address of st. So it reads the student marks and passes it. Now, another thing, you could have an array of students that you want to deal with. It works exactly like the, uh, uh, it works exactly uh, like an array of integers. So, in, so in, in here I'm going to have, uh, say, if I want to print series of students, I'm going to have print students marks, <laughs> okay? Surprisingly, the value passed to it is identical. I don't need to change it. Because address of 5 billion students and address of one student is the same. Right? Address of 5,000 integers or address of one integer is the same. They all begin at certain location. So the only difference would be that if I want to have this function that is re, uh, print students marks, very bad naming. I mean, like awful. It's going to be cause of 55,000 different bugs in a program, but I'm just using it just, just to show you. So in here, oh, and because it's an array, I have to add one more thing. My apologies. Because it's an array, I always have to pass the size because C language does not know what is the size of an array, right? So in here I have to pass the size to this, int size, and in here if I want to print them all, I'm going to say printf, uh, sorry, for i set to zero, i less than size, i plus plus, and what I will do, I'm going to say print student marks, and I'm going to pass the address of sti to it. And voila, all of them are printed. Are we okay with this? So same thing, and if you want to read several student marks, it's the same thing, no difference. So I'm going to have read student marks now. The difference is that this is not going to be constant, right? And you are going, probably you want to over here do that print thingy that we had. I'm going to uh, cheat it from here. I wrote it some, oh, I didn't write it, did I? No, I didn't. I want to say one of this and two of that. So in here, I'm going to say printf um, percent %d, and I'm going to do like that, and I'm going to put i plus 1 just to show a row number and go to new line. And in here, I'm going to say read student marks and pass the address of STI. Ta-da! Now it's reading all the students one by one. And because the, an array is by default uh, uh, passed by address, it's going to change the target and I'm okay. Now if you don't like this notation, you can always use this one. So act actually I'm going to do this. So I'm going to actually copy this and I'm going to put comment over here and put this one like this. And in here, I'm going to write potato. And in here, I'm going to say potatoes. OK? Are we OK with this? Same thing, no difference. Are we OK? Pardon me? You want to show row number, right? I want to show student number one, student number two. I don't want to start from zero. User doesn't understand zero. User is going to freak out. Student number zero? What does that mean? OK, so that's that. Um, now let's take a look at the things that we need to cover. These are the programming stuff. Now I'm going to go through one of the most important things, shadowing. When a variable shadows. Remember that I told you in C language, you can declare a variable at the beginning of any scope? That's an example. <clears throat> take a look. 
I have an integer i set to 4 over here, right? I have an integer i here and an integer i here. Oh, right? Wait a minute. What is this? No, so that's not the one. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Wrong, wrong thing to say. Clear all. I have an integer x over here that is scope is from here to here, right? This is the scope for it. And then I have an integer x over here that the scope is from here to here. But the problem is that the green scope is within the red scope, right? So which x is what? Whenever you create the same variable and the same name, it could be different types too, it doesn't make any difference. Within another scope, the inner one shadows the other one, which means in the first, in the do while, x that is in the foo makes the x in a foo inaccessible. If in the do while you mention x, it's the x inside the do, not, the, not, out, not outside. Okay? So whenever you have two scopes, one inside another, and you have the same name of variable, when you go in the, to the inner scope, that variable covers the variable that is outside. The, it makes the outside variable inaccessible. There is no way for, for you to be able to, to set the value of x inside the foo. You can't do that. No, no, they're two different things. Absolutely two different things. It's like if, it's a stupid example, but let's say there's a John outside of this class and we have a John inside of this class. If I shout John, the John inside of the class will answer, not the person that is outside. Okay, if the person that is inside goes out and I loud enough scream John, the John outside come in, comes in. So the, the, if you have the same variable within uh, overlapping scopes, Always the inner scope will answer your call first. The outer scope will not hear you. All right? Yes? Is there an advantage or is it just... It's just... I think this programmer was stupid doing something like that. But no, you have to know. You have to know because it won't give you an error. Remember that. It won't give you an error. It's, uh, it's a common mistake, actually. You've got to need to know that. Yeah, yeah. You, It never happened to me, but it, at any stage, you are within an inner scope and you want to make something out not to be visible, <laughs> just create a variable with the same name. I don't know why you want to do that, but it's possible. Are we okay with this? All right, so let's, let me see what else. Guys, scope is scope, okay? When you have an open curly bracket, that open curly bracket has a corresponding closed curly bracket. That is a scope. Now, if that is in front of a while loop, it's the scope of a lie loop. If that is in front of a function, it's the scope of the function. Now we can give it different names. Block scope and function scope. It doesn't make any difference. Any open bracket has a corresponding closed bracket. It's, that is its scope. Oh, done, okay? There is one more scope that you need to know. Actually, two more. One is called file scope. So if you take the variable and, va and, initial and declare that variable outside of all the curly brackets inside the file, that variable becomes visible to all the functions inside that file only. Okay? And it's a common mistake, but they call those variables global. They are not global. They are just visible to this file. So if you have five files in your project, and you create a code to code global variable in file A, that global variable will not be visible in file B, C, D, and E in your project, only in A. There is a way to make some variable global to all files. No, not at all. If you put it in a header file, and you create a variable in a header file, because the header file is included, again, use your previous knowledge, and include is simply a copy and paste, correct? So you're going to create five variables in your five files, all called A. And they, are, and they are visible to each file, but they have nothing to do with each other. You could make these five the same, 
but it's above our pay grade. Okay? We don't need to know how. You can do that. I've already talked about this. I don't want to talk about it again. We know what double code for, a, for an include is and what less than and greater than is. Um, well, you know what include is. You know what prototypes are. Include prototypes. What is this? So, you know, that we know that. Current directory, we know that. Scope, global, we don't need that. Passing arrays, passing arguments, parameters. Bearing changes, whatever that means. Passing structures, pass by value. Copying, pass by address. Efficiency. Arrow notation. Arrow notation, we know that. Style. We talked about it at the beginning of the semester. Structure walkthrough and done. Everything's covered. All right. Any questions? Um, two minutes to spare. Wow. It's a rare day because I didn't give your quizzes back. That's why. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. I don't know. I have to read it. Okay. The information that I gave you covers everything. I don't want, uh, the th so let me see. A variable that we do within a block that has block scope, the scope of the variable extends from its definition. Yeah. A variable that's, uh, okay. Essentially, this is a local scope, a variable that we declare within a function body as a local scope. Local variables, yeah. So if i is a local variable in here, if you had an integer i in here, not integer x, that becomes a block scope. It means from this block to this block. Essentially, they are naming. Remember I told you any open bracket has a closed curly bracket. The rule follows. Anything you specify in that block big, belongs to that block, and outside of that block is not visible. That follows everything. Now, any type of block that you in create inside a function, that's called a block scope. The whole body of the function is called local scope, and I have no idea what is a function scope. Function header is a function, yeah. It means essentially prototypes. Just any variables you declare differently than the function. Yeah. I'm saying like if I actually here, you see, at this point, if I write integer a, oh, okay, before that, okay. Before, outside of any curly bracket, that becomes a global. Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? All right. If any of you want to participate in the hard way, that is the, <laughs> the uh, 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 the, 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 pro the, the workshops and projects that I'm creating, let me know. I'm probably going to create a rule and do something about it.